Hey guys, and welcome to another video where we'll be looking at the Dell PowerEdge 2850 server. We're going to have a little look at what's inside and all of the options that you can get with it. So first of all, at the front, notice that we've got a front bezel and this thing can be locked so that when it's in the rack you cannot turn it off without a key or access any of the hard drives and things so it's just a little security measure there it just clips off like this and uh, if we start from this side the server comes with two USB ports and a VGA port so that you can connect your keyboard, mouse and screen and change settings and things on the server while you're in the data center. And we've also got a screen there which is like a diagnostic screen. It tells you if anything's wrong with the server and it flashes orange if there is. Otherwise it flashes blue and it just tells you the name of the server. There's also the on switch and a I button there which we'll have a look at in a minute. They also give you a floppy disk drive for installing and updating firmwares on the server and a CD DVD drive for installing OS's. But also at the front as you can notice there are six hard drive bays. These are hot swappable hard drives and they open up like this and pull out. And these are um, 73 gigabyte SCSI hard drives and they have 80 pin connectors and that's the most pins that you can get at the moment and you can just slot them back in again like that and this will all be done while the server's on Then we'll go around to the back. Now at the back we have two hot swappable power supplies, uh, a serial port, a VGA, two mouse keyboards, that information button again. We also got two gigabit Ethernet ports and two USB ports and that's where the expansion cards are now you can take out these hot swappable power supplies just by undoing the screw and pulling the lever like that and they pull out and that's what the connector looks like at the back and uh, even if you haven't got one of these plugged in via a mains power supply, the fan at the back still runs to pull air through the server. But every power supply has been different, so not every single one does that. And then to take off the top, we have to go back to the front again and undo these two screws. They'll also provide you with some information about the server and a service tag so that you can look it up and track the server on their website. So that's what it looks like inside. The first thing you'll notice is the four fans at the front of the server that pull the air through the hard drives and then pass it through the heat sinks for the CPUs. We've also got these cables here which connect the hard drives 
to the um, PCI expansion card there and uh, you have to have both these cables to be able to connect the bays up and they are named so you get them around the right way um, this shroud here helps with the airflow but it's also where the RAM is kept there's two skip two sticks of DDR2 one gigabyte RAM there and we also have two exhaust fans now these fans are hot swappable so you can take them out while the server's running and plug them back in again the expansion riser card here can be lifted out by this big lever like that. but you also have to undo the cables over here otherwise it won't come out and that's because the hard drives connect to it As you can see, these are a different type of PCI slot. Um, I think it might be PCI X, something along those lines, but I can't entirely remember. And that's where the hard drives are connected to. But also here, you may have noticed that there is a stick of what looks like RAM here and this is used for the RAID setup you can set up within the server but this also requires a battery to run RAID so the battery is there and it just plugs onto the board here also the other thing you need to run RAID is called a RAID key and that sits right there That's all it looks like. You can see why it's called a RAID key. And this server has um, two dual core 3 gigahertz processors. And you can easily remove heat sinks by pushing down on these levers over here although I don't think you'd do this while the server is running not a good idea there we go that's what the slot looks like I think that's about it there's nothing else I can show you <clears throat> I'm going to put this thing back together and then we'll look at all the things you can do while it's turned on. Okay, welcome back. I haven't put the top on because I wanted to just show something. So I'm just going to plug these in and then we'll turn it on. Now, see there we've got an orange light, that's just flashing because we haven't got the top on, so if there's something wrong with the server that light will flash orange, 
and it also does that the front of the server but instead that's the LCD screen at the front and the lettering says Power Edge 2850 intrusion just to tell you that there's something wrong and uh, you can see here on the hard drive bays that the bottom green light shows that they're wrong and then when they start spinning up now the second light will start flashing saying that they're being used and then with the front this light, this um, eye button here if you press it it will start flashing now this is useful because when you've got this in a rack and you've got at least 50 servers and you want to then change something on this server or put a cable out the back you can now tell that uh, that's the server that you want to change because then you have the light flashing at the back you can also press the button at the back and go to the front you can see now it's gone back to orange again now, with the hot swappable um, fans and things, when you've got the server on and you've got the lid open, you can easily pull these fans out and plug them back in without disturbing the server. And above the noise, you can unplug one of these. So now that one's broken, the server still runs. You can also take it out while the server's still running. That just helps you this one's broken. Redundancy. And you can plug one back in again. Last thing to show you is the front bezel has a piece of plastic on it that allows you to have the light flashing at the front so you know which server it is. And quite a bit of kit that these servers can come with is what they call a uh, DRAC card, which stands for Dell Remote Access, and this card just allows you to. Ooh, I'm going to turn this off. This card just allows you to connect to the server when it's turned off but has power to it, and it has its own IP address. And you can set it up so that you can access it anywhere in the world just by typing in the IP address and the port you just connect this cable up and you can um, turn it on, off, restart it but you can also load up a OS from your computer over in say Beijing so you can stick Windows Server 2008 on there and uh, be over in China or somewhere so that's quite cool but this does take over from the main um, graphics processor so that's why it's got a VGA port on there so you have to use that one instead of the onboard one but apart from that I think we're done there's not much else to show so I'll see you guys later